like, you should have just started without telling me. So you know, I didn't have that moment. I mean, <laughs> no, he do. changes his persona when he fucking records. Does He's he? like, like, welcome to Dollar Diaries. <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, the, the code switch. Come right on, now. I want to hear the come on, stay with the fucking flow. It's, I don't. I like, don't. All of a sudden, we're like normally talking, and he's like, two seconds late. He's like, welcome to Dollar Diaries, <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> Anas Memon, that's Alpha, Alpha Nancy, Nancy, Alpha Sierra, Mother Echo, Mother Oscar Nancy. I was just going to um, put it under the... <laughs> yeah, oh, good. right. <laughs> Ignore what I've just said. It has become sort of a shit show. And, and it gets increasingly more difficult to sustain yourself and take care of your family. Mm. Especially if, you're, if you run an independent business. That might not be very established. That might be just a few years down the line. And, and the government is, is almost... Rooting for you to lose uh, yeah. when you're Muslim, so it's it's a conversation that's tough to have about BJP, especially, and tough to digest when when certain events almost happen. Uh, you should have just started without telling me. Yeah. So you know, I didn't have that moment. I mean, he, he, was, no, he, he changes his persona when he fucking records. Does He's he, like, like, welcome to Dollar <laughs> Diaries. Uh, like, yeah. I'm like, dude, the, the code switch. Come on, I hear the come on, stay with the fucking flow. It's, I don't. I like, don't, all of a sudden, we're like normally talking, yeah. and he's like, two seconds late. He's like, welcome to Dollar <laughs> Diaries, and I'm like. <laughs> Man, I mean, man, like Relax I have your to, asshole. I have to fucking edit it. Like it gets harder. Like, like you know how hard it is to like listen to your own self, like yeah. talking in the mic, and like what the fuck am I, I don't, saying? I don't listen to myself yeah. talking. <laughs> the first few times that I started editing, I had to add bass to my voice so that it doesn't sound like a squiggly girl. <laughs> that, do you also publish it? With the <laughs> no. Hi everybody, welcome to the dollar. <laughs> Oh my god. All right. Hi everybody. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. One, two, three. Hi everybody. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh All right. I go. Yeah. All right. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Dollar Diaries. Today we have an amazing guest. How are you, Anas? I'm good. I'm doing well. We know a little bit about you. We didn't. We just started talking. Just assume we just started talking just like now. For like, thirty minutes. Yeah, we have thirty minutes <laughs> yeah, in. Don't worry. It's just, I got you. Because yeah, a lot of shit talking happened, but yeah. <laughs> so introduce yourself. Hi everyone. Hi. See everyone. your tone See, also is, changes. Yeah. Do I? It's do fine. I speak Go to ahead. a camera? Uh, uh, no, just I, speak to us. Man. Speak to you. Speak to right? us. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I already introduced myself, but <laughs> hi guys, it's nice to see. Uh, it's nice to be here. To be honest, yeah. thank you for having me um, on Dollar Diaries and Horizontal, I guess. Yes. Um, I love the wall, by the way. Yeah. Nice. We can't take credit for it. <laughs> we can't take Who credit for anything. For I don't know the company people. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was your people. Like <laughs> no, every podcast, you take a picture. Dude, we don't own a There's stake no in way. the company. We don't. Dude, I was excited to take a poll right after the <laughs> <laughs> Um, have we? The, We've started. Yeah, we, we started. Go, we I'll started. cut out some of the things. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Please cut out every time I say we've started. <laughs> yeah. Just to make sure. Because I'm very confused. <laughs> we have started. Good. All <sighs> right. Um, as an introduction, yeah. um, my name is Anas. I'm very happy to be here on Dollar Diaries. I have never done a podcast and I typically don't watch podcasts. But I thought this would be a nice way to see what you guys are doing. Because I saw that, you know, you have an up and coming thing and you're ca- kind of catching the wave, but also setting it up for Dubai and uh, and also pro- probably familiarize myself with the setting of a podcast. And you just got out of an internship. Tell us a little bit about what happened there. You spent four months there. How did you feel it was? How right. did you get the job though? Right. Because I mean, everybody's where, struggling. Where do I start? It. How did you get the job? <laughs> because I'm want, struggling. <laughs> I don't know how to get the job. Um, I'm sure you do know how to get the job. You've done, I, you've like networked with a billion people at this point. Yeah, but <laughs> so I talked to them. We know them how to an... get other people's jobs. Right. <laughs> we don't know right. how to get ourselves. Right. No, jobs. not just that. That was actually my issue for a long time yeah. as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. I spent nine months yeah. helping people get into university. Yeah. So not jobs, but like I, I spent nine months helping them doing this. Like, you remember like Mike Ross and like the first season of Suits? Yeah. yeah. Where he took exams and he took mm. like, I did all that stuff for like nine months straight, right? So I helped people get through. This might be illegal, so you might have to cut it. But I helped people get through to university, wrote their essays, did exams for them, learned new stuff. Yeah. You got paid for it, right? We'll just cut out the part time. where you said it was illegal. Right. And then Smart. we'll give the other yes, part. Yes, yes. And, and, and at some point, I had about yeah. 73 people I'd done it for. 
Yeah. So I got pretty good at getting people <laughs> into where they wanted to be at. Yeah. And I said, I should probably do this for myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when my uh, career really started. But no, so you said, how did I get my investment yeah. banking job, yeah. right? I mean, it's typically what you do. If I'm not sure, you did finance as well. So you know the investment banking yeah. industry, you yeah. definitely do. The way, the way it works for investment banking is you have a summer you can apply to or an off cycle, right? And the summers you typically apply a year in advance, an off cycle as and when they come up but typically also at least six to nine months in advance, right? So I spent the best part of my exchange semester in the UK last year um, applying for off-cycle internships because I had a six-month gap during my university degree, which is a bachelor's plus an M1. That's how it's structured in France, um, to, to work. That six months was generally just set aside to work. And I wanted to get something in investment banking because that is the goal. I didn't. I got something at a Web3 VC that was based in Switzerland. I worked there for about three months. That was a great, great experience, but I never stopped applying to IB. Yeah. And eventually I got an interview. Yeah. I had a couple of rounds as it goes, like a, a fit interview, a behavioral, a technical, an HR. We don't really have HR at the boutique. Yeah. So that was skipped over. And then I, I got the, I got the offer actually on my birthday, Alhamdulillah, oh. last year. So I, I knew that was it. I, I didn't wait like even an hour. I signed off immediately before giving notice to my other internship yeah. before signing off or anything. Did you did you get yourself like a like a gift watch or something? Gift no, no. I I've worked six internships so far, and the only gifts I've given are either people I've been seeing at the time yeah. or my mom. No, like have you have you gifted yourself like something? No. You didn't. No. Not at all. Everybody does that. <laughs> oh, this guy, right? Like, oh, I something. I'm going to Australia. I'll get myself a watch. I just broke up with somebody. I might get a watch. <laughs> I wish I did that. That's that. That must be so nice. Yeah. Because the ample uh, amount of reasons to get a watch. <laughs> I, the thing is, I really like what I've had. That I feel like every guy has phases. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know. So, so I had cars as a phase. I had shoes as a phase. I'm slowly entering my watch phase now, which is good timing as well because I'm also entering the industry. Yeah. So I'm. Inshallah, they're going to be making the money I need yeah. to make to yeah. buy those watches. Um, I noticed you're wearing it on your right hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, I get shit on for wearing the watches on my right hand. Oh, you're right. My guy. Yeah. Let, let's go. Yeah. Look at his watch. Well, is that a Mickey Mouse watch? No, it's a Snoopy. They got <laughs> Snoopy it as a watch. gift. Yeah, for I, me. I felt like you were wearing a meme watch. Yeah. <laughs> Snoopy, nice. I used well, to like Snoopy a lot. Yeah, Snoopy's yeah. nice. Yeah. Well, show me your watch. Yeah, sure. Oh, shit. Sure. That's nice. This yeah. is a. It looks kind of like a Panerai. Like a what? Sorry? Panerai. What's a Panerai? It's a Swiss brand. See, that just shows I, I know nothing about watches <laughs> yet. This is a Longines. It is a bequeathment. <laughs> okay. So I did not buy this. Yeah. It was actually, the, the strap's it, broken yeah. as well, but I would never take it off. I'd rather just go get it fixed because yeah. mm. it was the first sort of entry-level luxury watch that my dad bought yeah. for himself when he, I guess, moved out. He moved out of home when he was 17, yeah. went to make a life, take care of his family in India. And the first ever watch he bought for himself was this one. Yeah. My dad has like a... C I told you about the Seiko 5 that my sister yeah, stole, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the Seiko 5, like a really nice Seiko 5. Yeah. And like my sister, it's like lying in my sister's drawer. Like yeah. she barely wears it. It's nice mechanical movements, yeah. everything. Beautiful watch. And like it lasted him quite a bit. It's still working, top tier condition, nothing. Well, it's like a different feeling when you like get your dad's watch. It's yeah. like, it's it so... Is. It is. Like I always... My dad, ha I have like two 25, 30 year old watches, like Seiko's very normal, probably like hundred dollars worth, but I just keep it always like with me. And it's like, it feels good to have Absolutely. like a part of you. Like that was like his first uh, award watch from his company. And I, like, we, we just make sure it's always serviced and like, it's Absolutely. just a good feeling. It's like saying you're honored to carry yeah. on the legacy. Yeah. And it's weird to attach yeah. to, I don't know, um, to say that this particular object yeah. has emotional attachment in yeah, my life. Yeah, for right? sure. It is kind of weird because it's just a watch at the end of the it day. It could be a Casio or a Timex, but it still yeah. holds emotional value, right? It does. Yeah. And, and I think primarily it does because when you sit down and someone asks you, what's where's the watch from? Yeah. You you can tell them a story that yeah, you hold sure. close to your for heart. Sure, for sure. And I think that story itself is why for it's sure. important. The for watch sure. itself is just for a sure. piece exactly. of metal. Exactly. Right? Watch, especially nowadays, you see a lot of analog watches coming in. Like if it was like two years ago, we were wearing Apple Watch. All the sentimental value of what a beautiful watch is, like what it comes yeah, from, yeah. it was gone. Everybody had the fucking Apple Watch on this, yeah. like buzzing no, all I, the time. I, could never. I fucking I, hate I, Apple Watches. I, 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 was, I used to wear the smartwatches and stuff. As yeah. soon as I started wearing analog, the fact that 
I don't, it doesn't fucking beep when I'm eating. It doesn't beep when I'm praying. It doesn't beep when I'm like talking to people. That's like a huge relief because like my phone's silent and shut off and kept there. Like I don't care. Right? Yeah, and that doesn't happen. Like it just keeps on beeping. Like like five minutes, somebody's texting me. Somebody's sending me a WhatsApp message. So it's telling me to stand up because I've been sitting too long. It's a fucking nightmare to have those things. I've never really even considered that because... I mean, my first watch, I think as most Indian kids had, was a G-Shock. Mm. When I was 11, I want to say, or something mm. like that, right? And I love that watch to bits. And ever since then, I've never worn a watch that's been a smartwatch. Because I feel like, A, um, it don't feel like a watch. It feels yeah. like a gizmo and a gadget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not in Spy Kids, right? <laughs> I wish I was, but I'm not. <laughs> I'd use something cooler if yeah. I was in Spy Kids. And B, um, I mean, truth be told, a few years ago, this girl looked at me and she said, I like the fact that you were... A watch like a real man yeah. and not a smartwatch. Yeah. And, and I, think, I think that's always stuck with me in my head. I said, yes, that's exactly what I, I am. I'm a real man. <laughs> and it stuck with yeah. me. And that's the thing because you're right. People make fun of the right hand thing as well. Yeah. For I don't me, think it's, it's a big deal. No, no, no. Because growing Why up, I heard, again, yeah. this could be sort of maybe homophobic. I don't know. But I heard if you wear it on your right hand, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it's, it's you trying to tell people without telling people that you're gay. Oh, fuck. Okay, that I didn't know. That is something that's like it's an actual thing. You could Google it, right? Oh shit! Uh, it was in like DC culture. Oh, what could change you? Also. <laughs> no, no, right, right. So when I heard that, I was like, that's kind of fucked. In Tamil Nadu, right? Like oh, yeah. there is this, there was this actor. We slash, both are from Tamil Nadu. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Actor I, slash politician yeah. named MGR, right? MGR, yeah. So MGR used to wear like a very respected politician. You can like or hate his politics aside, but very respectable politician. He used to wear his watch on the right hand. And like every time I go in Tamil Nadu, like wearing my watch in the right hand, what the fuck are you doing? You think you're MGR? Like, like, like. Oh, that's good though, right? You could, if you idolize someone, you kind of copy them. Yeah, yeah. but uh, okay. the problem is like the place I am from, they are like, they support the opposition. All oh, right. Congress. So, right. yeah, not so, Congress, uh, DMK. DM. Real? ADMK. No, MGR was ADMK. Oh, okay. We support DMK. Okay. So it becomes like don't, a full. Don't say we. <laughs> no, we like the, you, my place. Here. <laughs> so it becomes she just a whole. Club I'm, with his ideology. I'm not into politics. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah. every time you wear the watch and go out, it becomes like a political issue. Like, why are you mm. wearing that? Are you like secretly rooting for the other team? Like, sort yeah, of a problem. Not so secretly anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's like yeah. hidden, like under the. Oh, okay. Like my granddad used to have a flag. Like in his car, like he he's he was a chairman for the like uh not chairman he was like a counselor for the like an MLA no 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 no, no <laughs> like we'd be fucking rich if we were fucking MLA <laughs> black money all day baby. yeah that's what I'm saying like uh no but he was like a like a counselor for the chairman chairman of what uh, of our uh town right okay yeah, mm. of our you town. have Karakuri. chairmans for towns yeah yeah we have chairmans kind of. for is it not I don't is know it how it or is it like it's not mayor mayor would be one so you have like the t villages like yeah. a sheriff taluk yeah it's not even a no. sheriff okay like you have a taluk yeah and yeah. taluk belongs in a district different like a okay. district has different taluks yes. then a city has different districts then a country has cities taluk so. could be like a mohalla basically mm. mohalla yeah yeah, yeah, like a mohalla. yeah mohalla sorry yeah. And and you, he was the like chairman is the head of the mall. Yeah, kind of like okay. a, he was like continue. the advisor to the chairman. I I don't know. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but so we used to have like every car we like. I, I'm I'm not gonna, like we had a shitty car regardless, but we had a car. Yeah. Okay. And every car <laughs> we had yeah. was like we had the red flag. Communists. Um, no, no, no. The DMK <laughs> <China>. flag. <laughs> DMK flag. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had DMK flag like oh. um up high, like. We we don't know where the fucking money came from for the for the cars. We know it was not black money, but we'd fucking take loans to show that we had cars. So it was like nuts. Um, it's like a DMK, especially yeah, in Tamil Nadu. Yeah. It's like a cult it, sort of a it's, thing. Yeah, everybody is, has like a cult they sort of affiliation with this political yeah. party. Okay. Yeah, and okay, they're fine. Sort of, with their if you're DMK, you have to portray an image. Yeah, it's like a yeah. huge day, like throw huge galas and shit yeah, yeah, yeah. for like absolutely not. Are they successful? Yeah, yeah, they're they quite. Are, successful. They're yeah. currently in the ruling. Uh, okay, they're ruling. And they're we all, we're always on the winner side, man. Like, <laughs> all right, okay. if if a, a, a DMK wins next time we no ADMK. no I don't like ADMK. <laughs> we have it on record by the way I screw ADMK screw <laughs> my family will disown me <laughs> well, because they support ADMK no they support DMK yeah everybody yeah. supports DMK it's it's just a thing like yeah. everybody supports DMK yeah. I feel like and because I know nothing about your localized politics yeah yeah because right? yeah. Bombay is very different I'm from yeah. Bombay yeah, yeah. 
I was going to, I was like, where should I insert the question? Where, I'm like, where are you from? <laughs> right, so I'm, I'm from, I'm from Bombay. Yeah. Um, I wasn't raised there. Okay. I was raised between Saudi, Bahrain and Dubai. Cool. But I spent three months every year in Bombay. All right. And I feel like every spot has its own localized politics. Like for me, I know nothing of what you're saying. Mm. Right? And I don't think I'm expected to, but I wouldn't expect you to understand what's happening in like Mira Road or... Or in Lokanwala, you know, I, I don't expect yeah, you to know it. But well, wherever you go, especially because of our culture, yeah. we have to have some kind of affiliation. You have to have some opinion on something. Because yeah. if you don't, you're just considered as, uh, you're like wasting your privilege almost. Yeah. Or you're wasting your political affiliation. Like, I know people from my office say, like even the investment bank I'm at, um, who flew in, this is not India, but who flew into Pakistan just to vote for what happened last week. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy. Man. Well, no, but because the Pakistan elections are a little bit complicated, right? Like oh, we, yes. Definitely. Yeah, very yeah. complicated. <laughs> yes, no, no. This, the, the, the guy you're talking to, <laughs> yeah. he was going to book a flight to... Bo- to Where what? are you from? India. Uh, to, uh, no, no. I was to, like, if I didn't have uh, my exam on May, yeah. I would have gone to India to vote. To vote, yeah. To vote for Pakistan? DMK, no, not DMK, to vote DMK, for DMK, Pakistan. Right? Yeah. I was like, what? what? Yeah, like... People, people do travel to vote yes, for yes, their... Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a, impressive. Yeah. Look, yeah. the problem is, like, as an Indian, like, do I think my vote's going to make a huge difference? Probably not. Mm. But it's just like, you have this right, you want to kind of exercise that right, and you want to give it to the Communist Party of India. So, like, it's a, so for you, it's principle. It's like an usul. You know, yeah, like you have to do yeah. it. Yeah, it's like a... What do you say? Like, this is the it's least that India can give me. Yeah. No, I think you're giving something to India. India's yeah. not giving anything to you. <laughs> Fair <Right>? enough. <laughs> like, like, because you're exercising yeah. your right that you've been, sure, granted as a, yeah. as a birthright, but they're not really listening or yeah. no, they're not. No, uh, even if I vote for the party that I want, they're not going to listen to me. I'm yeah, like, yeah. nobody. Sure. I, the thing is, though, I don't know. I don't know numbers of like, say, voter registration mm. or the number of people who, in a constituency, if, if you need like... Are 60% participating or is it 70? Is it 80? I have no idea. Mm. So I don't know if it's on the rise in India. But I would assume there is a lot more disinformation and dis- disillusionment almost about Got certain it. things, right? Yeah. About the fact that oh, we don't we don't really have power, so we don't really know what to do. And and they'd rather talk on social media and like try to get their message across in alternate methods than than do the traditional voting and, and balloting. Because like even Pakistan, for example. <laughs> they had no control. They had no control. The they, said, they voted. This for, is our place. Yeah, That's they it. voted majority. Like yeah. the majority voted against the military, and military is like, eh, screw you. And so, um, what, what are they? Well, like, what? What do you expect though? Because the military has something over everyone who's not from the military, right? They have yeah. something to hold over them, yeah. so they have to fall in line almost, right? Because the military will not leave this this ruling uh, establishment that they that they have, and. And if they don't have something over you, there's not enough of you. Correct. There's not enough of them that are not corrupt, right? Mm-hmm. So what are they going to do? Stand up against them? No. No. You're going to fall back in line. That's also, even if you take Indian politics, for example, right? There is, like, factually, you see the polls and data, you know BJP is going to win, right? Yes. It, it is without a doubt BJP yes. is going to win the upcoming election. But still, like, the question is, like, if I, if you don't support BJP, what is the incentive for you to go and vote for the other opposition. I mean, if you firmly 100% believe that there is no chance anyone else There's can no vote, chance. Is that what you're saying? There is no chance. Right, then you don't have an incentive. Yeah, there's no incentive. So that's why like most of the people, like you look around all the places, right? But the biggest I, disincentive is like, they feel like, you know, my vote doesn't matter. But imagine millions and millions of people collectively think this. It's It becomes bad, right? You, it is bad. It, it is, is bad. It's like, like class action, right? Yeah. If you could turn the tide and flip it on its head, and millions of votes could matter. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. They could they could be kingmakers almost. Like that one percent could be a kingmaker. Yeah. But for that to for that to happen, I have to say that I have to firmly believe that corruption won't won't Correct. be commonplace. Yeah. And that's just not true, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like our uh, India itself, the amount of disinformation, yeah. the amount of disinf like it's a concerted effort, right? Like it is. Yeah. It is. And it's it's top down, right? It's yeah. not bottom up. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't pervade the ranks slowly. No, it's top down. They it's it's like strategy decided at a higher level that's slowly wafting through the levels and reaches the bottom for the common man. And the common man, but at that point, is tired and sick and exhausted. Correct. And and for you to believe that there can be institutional change is a tall order. Another problem with like 
potential institutional change is that you need to have an alternative. And right. you look at India's case, like who is your alternative? You have like the most dysfunctional political party as an opposition, right? Uh, and this is like Congress, by the way, is like a they've been ruling India for a very long time, right? A dynasty, right? And they have like the most dumbest, stupidest, the least charismatic people voting against them, who is probably most charismatic prime minister we have, right? You can disagree on the politics, but you can say that Modi has a little bit of charisma, charisma around well, You it. can say that he's stamped, yes, charisma, yeah. and he's stamped our authority in the world. You know, he said, we're here yeah. and we're here to grow. And we will be growing and you better pay attention because if you don't, you'll miss the train. Correct. But the way he's doing it may not be, may not be agreeable. This is... Probably the most I've spoken about Indian politics in like three years. <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure how we got into this conversation, yeah. but it's a fun, fun I, conversation. It is because yeah. it is also a very different conversation if you're Muslim. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I'm not entirely sure how it is in Tamil Nadu, but Bombay has become sort of a shit show. And, and it gets increasingly more difficult to sustain yourself and take care of your family, mm. especially if you're, if you run an independent business that, that might not be very established. That might be, just a few years down the line. And and the government is is almost rooting for you to lose uh, yeah. when you're Muslim. So it's it's a conversation that's tough to, to have about BJP especially and tough to digest when certain when when certain events almost happen, right? And and again, I don't want to be too vague about it because I don't know how politically inclined your your audience or your yeah. podcast is it's but fine if they're pissed they'll comment and that's engagement for brilliant. us brilliant i'll get yeah, you engagement like yeah publicity because yeah, like pub, I, publicity? I flew into sorry I publicity flew into, oh, I PR. brain fart <laughs> no, no no pr is bad pr, <laughs> PR. Um, yeah. gazala is not there today right? yeah, she'll come or she'll come yeah, yeah. i think because i flew into bombay last month mm. and i was only there for a few days Flying in, my cousin texted me and he said, don't come. I said, why? And he's my older, like, I don't have an older brother, but he's my older cousin. Mm. He's basically my older brother. Yeah. Shout out, Mom Levi. Hi. Um, <laughs> and he basically said, don't come. Yeah. I said, why? And he sent me videos of, like, of the streets of Mirror Road, of, of certain parts of Bombay. And again, this isn't, I'm not from, like, the affluent Rich side of Bombay, South Bombay. I don't, I've not seen South Bombay, right? <laughs> I saw South Bombay this time because I went in for business meetings. Yeah. So I saw the side of Bombay that, that people from Dubai would typically go to. Mm. Um, that, for example, she's from, right? You're from uh, South Bombay? Right. Hey, then, she's rich. Right. Oh, she's rich. <laughs> <laughs> and dad has a vault under his bed, like for sure. <laughs> so like, the first time I spoke to her, I kind of understood that, oh, she's from South Bombay. Okay. Yeah. And it's a very different vibe because you know where they're from and the, ty the type of Bombay that they see. Um, I don't see that. And I've never yeah. seen that. And, and when I was coming in, he sent me videos and he was like, this is what it looks like. Mm. Be careful. It's bulldozers taken to age old Muslim establishments, right? It's, it's people in the streets pulling out guns and conjures and saying, these are our streets. It's people grabbing Muslims and saying, take your pants off. Let me see if you're cut or not. Right? Mm. Yeah. I, 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 and that, that level of, and I'm thinking, man, that's, this is supposed to be my country. That's kind of weird. Uh, so, so to have a conversation about politics. I think weird is politics, an understatement. <laughs> sorry? Weird is an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. It's, yeah. it's hellish, right? And, and yeah. to, have, to have a conversation about politics as a Muslim from Bombay is a very different experience today than it was like 10 years ago. I can say that for sure. Especially since the whole 2016-17 Registration Act. It's very different. I think it's, it's a little, better. slightly better in the southern state, especially Tamil Nadu. Definitely. Uh, because and I, Kerala. I yeah Kerala also to a large extent right uh, we're very secular as uh, states it's because like mm. the problem with south right like none of the national parties can really come into power without a coalition with the local government so the only time congress came into power was in coalition with dmk right so there is a lot of huge emphasis on the local politics we believe the locals more than the what we consider the outsiders. You speak Hindi, you're an outsider, right? And that, while it's arguable, whether it's good or bad, like that kind of helped us in certain ways. So we always come from that very secular, a lot of atheist influences there, like a lot of communist influences, a lot of secular influences. So all of these, like it's much harder for like, whether it be BJP, whether it be Congress, whether it be Ahmad Army Party, whoever it is, it's significantly harder for 
them to come into Tamil Nadu. Uh, if you even if you go to Tamil Nadu, right? Like I, I not Chennai maybe, but like if you go into the villages or like smaller cities, every city will have at least like one Lenin statue. Right, like is that true? Yeah, uh, every city has a Lenin yeah. statue along with like the local uh, politicians. Like one Lenin statue in most of the cities, minimum, right? And that's not like in the sense like Lenin had some bad policies aside, right? but that influence that came in. So I think it also comes from the fact that uh, when we got independence, right? Um, what happened is that uh, we Indians were exporting uh, movies. Mm. Right, uh, Raj Kapoor movies and everything mm. to places like Russia, and Russia was giving us their books. Mm. All right, and say whatever you want, like a lot of liter uh, literature was sold in the southern states. So you see the Kerala and Tamil Nadu. You typically see a lot more communist influences, and you'll see a lot of Raj Kapoor films still popular in Ukraine and. Uh, Russia and all these places as well. There are still like people go like Uzbekistan weddings and stuff. They play Raj Kapoor music and like sing along and all these things. So I think that influence is there. So because of that, it becomes so much harder for like mass politics. It becomes so much hard to make like a case for like these people are against you. These people are against you. It becomes significantly harder. I think they're succeeding to some rate, but it's not nearly as successful. That is... I mean, the way I see it is exactly. I mean, now I've learned that Raj Kumar was a Raj barter Kapoor. almost. Raj Kapoor, so he was a mm -hmm. barter um, in this trade for for the southern states, learning about communism and socialism. But we've always known this, right? That like you're more autonomous, you're more independent, and yeah. you make decisions based on your people, mm -hmm. right? The the your constituency and not the rest of India and what the federal government says. It's mainly states yeah. for you guys. And I think that's how it should be because India, while it is one country, is extremely secular in, in, in that every state has its own culture, its own religion, its own traditions, its own, own language, own language, right? Yeah. And language is that, that form of expression itself is, is like the birthplace of everything different Correct. across your entire life, right? Even like, uh, for example, when I think about the differences in language, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is Moroccan speaking French versus Algerians versus French people, mm. right? Because that's what I've seen in the last few years. And and that that itself pervades their entire culture. And that's their whole identity based and embroiled in that language. So so when I see the southern states, I think good for them. Kudos to them. Because they held strong. Yeah. Right. The rest of I mean, the rest of the states just kind of fell in line with federal policies. And you guys I mean, I think perhaps it was a product of you guys being more literate at the time. Yeah. Because the South had a higher rate of literacy, literacy if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. Kerala, so especially. When the, yeah. Kerala especially. Kerala yeah. especially, right? Exactly. So so when the books came in, <laughs> you guys were probably the only ones who could read them. Yeah. And, and that probably helped you establish uh, the the foundation required for, for how successful you guys have been. Because Kerala, I think in terms of quality and, of life and, and, and maybe like whatever you call the happiness index, Probably doing better. Probably significantly to, better. Yeah, yeah, the most uh, most other states, right? It's it's they not. They have good food. What yeah, else do you need? Uh, what food? <laughs> they have good Kerala? food. Yeah. yeah, Kerala has good food. You Amazing food. Give me an example. Uh, you have a lot of fish varieties. Oh, you have a lot yeah. of rice. That's a coastal area, so like, no, the entire Kerala is coastal area. Yeah, the, <laughs> Kerala is. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what he said. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, just shattered him for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get like, um, what's that beef? Coconut fry. Oh yeah, beef. A lot With of parota and yeah. stuff Dude, like that, that. All of that sounds like my vibe. Yeah, yeah. it's so it's good. Amazing. I'll move. Like he'll take. I'll tell you the restaurant. You guys go and yeah. have. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Sorry. last time we went to that, uh, what is it like? Uh, no, no, we'll take take him to a better place, man. <laughs> Not man, I'll tell no, it's you. Fine. I can go to a dhaba and eat. Really <laughs> it's it's like the most shittiest <laughs> ambience. Like, the, the, like, but is the food good? Food was amazing. Food is that's amazing. what you. Yeah, food yeah, was yeah. amazing. But you get better food than that. That's all I'm saying. The problem yeah. is like I like their food because like I have a typical problem with like if it's too spicy, if it's too salty, I just hate the food. You're right? a weird guy. Funny <laughs> right? spice, you're a weird. Not, yeah. not spice, like. Okay, dude, I've 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 had bad luck yeah. with so many people in like the past few months. I'm like, mm. like, how can you not handle spicy food? Like, I'm all I ask is just if it's spicy, I'll order it. Like, yeah. and if I go to a restaurant, just I'm like, just give me the spiciest thing on the menu. Right? That's okay. That's impressive. See, for me, yeah. it's 
I don't typically eat a lot of spice. Yeah. I can eat a lot of spice. Yeah. I would not go to a restaurant and say give me the spiciest thing, but yeah. I think one of the best ways of getting to know someone is by eating spicy food with them. Yeah. Because spice to me is like nature's alcohol. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing ever. I can't explain it to you, yeah. but instead of going out and getting wasted, sit down with a good friend or sit down with someone you want to get to know, eat the spiciest shit possible. Yeah. You know, in, in an hour while you're eating, you're both going to be crying. Yeah. Every part it of you, give you, every single is going to be right? dropping yeah. and you're going to be honest about yeah. everything. Yeah. It's the most, like everything you feel <laughs> is just going to come outside. Yeah, yeah. It's like a truth serum almost. I love it. I don't know, man. I can't, I can't handle like too spicy. It's just a, it's just a, you need to get over the hump. You need to take him for the spiciest shit possible. Listen, he, I'll make sure that he cries and weeps and begs you not to he eat. He is, he never tries. Like I, I'm like, I'll take you to a Sri Lankan restaurant. I'll take you to a Nepali restaurant. I'll yeah. take you to like, like try different stuff. And he's like, no, I'm just going to sit at home. Like eat eat the same food again. Yeah, it, and like it's, I it's, like I was like, can we try at least? Can we at least try like uh, Pan Asian food? Like he's like, no, I just like that day we went to Halab, and I was like, uh, we we were, I was like, okay, fine, we'll we'll go to an Arabic restaurant because I can't choose, I can't probably decide what you're going to eat because you're not gonna like it. So he's not gonna appreciate like different, uh, very not. Yeah, different cuisines and he's not very experimental with food. No, That's what I've understood. I mean, there is a set amount mm. of things I yeah. like, mm. I enjoy, yeah. and I don't want to go out of it. I feel like I've tried, some, every time I tried new things, I've had a disappointing exper experience with it. Like I've tried Chinese for the first time and uh, it was like so vinegary, so sour. <laughs> and it was like, it was just giving me heartburn all day. It was like, I don't like feeling that discomfort. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. The thing is, I understand what you're saying because... I was a very picky eater growing yeah. up, right? And I couldn't eat anything that wasn't my set of seven dishes. And yeah. That's it. It was like, like at home, it was dal gosh and biryani and, and nehari or whatever. Yeah. Um, I could never eat eggs. I literally could not eat an egg no matter what. I could yeah. eat them as an omelet and no other form of eggs. Yeah. So I was very picky about certain things. I would love like trade secrets. If you try bread and Nutella and cheese, it's the most banging thing, <laughs> right? I would have that shit for breakfast at the age of 16. Go. I didn't care. Yeah. And and then I left home. I packed my <coughs> bags. I left. Is it that 17. good? Like Nutella, cheese, and bread? Oh, yeah. Dude, it's I've the weirdest thing, it. but it's banging. I've you, never had it. That day we were trying to grab uh, breakfast, me and mm. Liz. And she was like, What do you eat for breakfast? I was like, Every day I have a cup of oats and bread. <laughs> cup Stand of oats and bread. Cup of oats and bread. <laughs> that kind of sounds good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like bread with cheese or bread with like Nutella. Yeah, like okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah bread with cheese. Away. A cup of if, oats and then like the bread with something. Bread with just something, bread. not that just, just like that yeah. just bread. Made this yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, see, that's the thing. Like you, you, you think it's disgusting, but oats doesn't mm. give you a heartburn. You can go; it gives you enough energy, fills you up. Everything's good. Oats just makes me gag, bro. <laughs> no, I, I like oats, but you can't have it every day. I'm not. I'm not living in a shelter yeah. under <laughs> under like <laughs> there's no bombs above my head. It's okay, man. We're good. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we're okay, man. We can eat food, and, and so the. When it changed for me, sorry, um, when it changed for me was when I left home at 17. Mm. I went to the US and when you stop getting the food you're used to or accustomed to and you, when you stop being spoiled for choice almost as we are in this city. And like you Gar Kakana, to, like, you're the, like you can just get free food every day and your mom just yes. cooks whatever you want. Yes. Plus it's you have like, a halal haram problem. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's when you kind of, I don't know, you shore up and you say, okay, I'll take what I can get and I'll eat, you know, whatever is in front of me. And that's okay. Because yeah. like at 17, you don't know how to cook. Yeah, now yeah. I can cook for myself. Yeah. Now I know how to sustain myself. I can meal prep. I can do all, you know, everything essential. But when you first leave home, you don't know how to cook. You don't know what's good. Yeah. I knew half the words for vegetables and 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 like, and like leaves. What, yeah. I don't know what they're called. Coriander? Like, yeah, I knew them in like Hindi and Urdu, <laughs> not English, yeah. right? I didn't know Korean. I knew like... Yeah, yeah. I was like, who do I ask in, in like a US grocery? Like, what am I going to say? Give me Pudina? He's going to say, get the fuck out of my house. Get the fuck out of my shop. Sorry. Yeah. So, so yeah, you adapt fast once you don't have a choice. Yeah. And that's when I think it changed for me. And then I started loving cuisines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I love trying everything. Yeah, yeah. Except one or two particular things I wouldn't want to have. I love trying everything. Uh, is your like, are your parents, grandparents all from Bombay? We were colonized. At some point, and that's my explanation for the way I look. Okay. Um, that's my, what I was gonna ask. Are you Anglo Indian? No, no, I'm not. You're not. To be honest, I'm I'm actually not. Uh, my mom and dad are both from Bombay. Okay. One from Jageshwari, 
my my dad's from Kurigao, my mom's from Jogeshpuri. Okay. So, I mean, they grew up in the same city. My right. grandparents, same thing. Right. Love I'm marriage? I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Love well, come arranged. according to the, the family at the time, yeah. it was arranged. Okay. But it was a love marriage that they presented as an arranged marriage. Okay, that's you good. Know, so that's it, how they were classic. Like, yeah, 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 it worked out. It was a full love story yeah. that worked out. Yeah. Very, very sweet. Yeah. My mom fell in love with my dad and knew for a fact that she would marry him no matter what. Oh, wow. And then she did it. Oh, wow. And that's the thing. Like, <laughs> she, she knew what she wanted and she got what she wanted. It's amazing, right? Like, she... Bless her. She's very smart. She did something I could never. She she did her her undergrad in microbiology. Oh wow! Ooh. Right, I could never. That's yeah. and yeah. so I know she's very smart. And she's very capable. But she knew. Okay, after I graduate, I wanna marry this man. I wanna. I'll move with him wherever he's moving because he moved to take care of the family, send money back, and uh, and then she sacrificed her career for us to take care of us. So bless her. Yeah, bless them both. Coming next on the Dollar Diaries podcast. Cash App, you, you know the, the Alpha Tauri team, right? They renamed it. Did they? Yeah, yeah. Now it's Visa Cash App ra- uh, Racing Bulls. What? Yeah. <laughs> You're joking. No, oh. I'm not. You're, what the? That's really <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> no one understands your culture like people who have it. That's a diss to white people. <laughs> that, that, that is it. That's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, learn how to network. Learn how to organize yourself and understand what you really want from life and then and then go for for that experience and try to understand because for me to understand I wanted IB I had to do an internship in wealth management in data analysis in market research and VC I did all of that and then I understood no I want to do IB so unless you're going to go there and work and learn you're never going to figure out what you want to do you're just going to think of it like a pipe dream from a book <laughs>